This is uh, Ed Weir here. All right, today we're going to talk about overpayments. Uh, there's a big policy change that happened last week. So we're going to talk about that and uh, we're going to come up with a plan of attack for everybody that has an overpayment. Hopefully there's uh, 2 million people watching right now because there's 2 million people with overpayments. And, uh, but uh, yeah, I don't think I'm uh, that popular anyway, I, or people don't know I exist. Um, my wife doesn't know I'm existing, but anyway, I, I won't go there. All right. So uh, um, let's see here. So today we're going to have a full schedule. We are going to talk about overpayments. We're going to do a plan of attack. We're, um, and I'm going to go over the, uh, the the new policy, the four points. Uh, I'll go over that again. That uh, I went over last week, but I'll go over it again for all the new people watching. Um, and then uh, once we finish all that, <clears throat> then I will open it up for questions and answers. So, uh, all right. Hopefully, everybody, please, everybody, press like. Can. Uh, can I get a thumbs up? Uh, can you hear me? Let's see. Let's see if everybody can hear me first. And let's see. Okay. All right. We got 17 people watching. I've got a new system here that has little uh, um, little overlays and everything to help out. And uh, let's make sure we are five by five all right mr Steele from savannah georgia gives us a thumbs up okay all right so my new system seems to be working um it's a lot better um than everything else okay all right hey cadillac jack what's up all right so um let's go right into it and again so this is the overpayment so last week the uh, the new commissioner of the Social Security Administration, uh, Martin O'Malley. Um, it's Sunday. He might be watching. Hey, Martin, how you doing? I've met pretty much all the other commissioners. Um, the, the most recent one before him, I didn't meet because I had already left by that time. Um, but I met the other three or four or five commissioners when I was, uh, yeah, the district manager. Um, got pictures and all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, so Martin. Maybe I'll, uh, would you like to come on live one day and uh, talk to uh, talk to everybody for us? Um, all right, so you're you're invited. Anytime you want to come in and uh, and join us, please do. All right, so let's see here. So this is the new. Let me take that away here. All right, is this a great new system here or what? I love it. <clears throat> All right, uh, Howard's here, Jenny here, loud and clear. All right, perfect. Okay, so here is the the new policy. Well, the I guess the outline of the policy. What happens is, you know, the, he he makes his um, you know public communication, and then behind the scenes, they come up with like this two paragraphs here. This will, you know, eventually translate into a hundred pages of policy, um, and with all of this. Um, with all of this, uh, please, I request everybody, the Social Security employees, you're going to get more training on this than unfortunately they will. You know, they, they're, they're understaffed, they're helping thousands of people every day. They'll have a meeting, usually a Wednesday meeting, it'll be a 45 minute meeting, and they'll talk about this, but there'll be a thousand different variables that they'll have to address. So this policy is going to work itself out over the next several weeks and next several months. And I'm going to watch it all. And if there's anything new in there, I'm going to, we'll, we'll do another live and I'll tell you all the new stuff. And uh, maybe it will like make your life easier because that is the purpose of this channel. That is our mission to make your life easier so you can go on with your life and do other things rather than worrying about the bureaucracy. Let me you know, um, translate the bureaucracy into language that you can act on. So this is uh, what we're gonna do for those with overpayments out there. Please everybody press like, and then we will get started. Okay, so it's four points that the commissioner came in. And number one is, I don't think this is relevant to y'all, 
if you've already got overpayments, but people that have new overpayments starting tomorrow, their new overpayments. Previously, what happened is they sent out the overpayment notice and for whatever reason you don't respond because you don't want to respond or you didn't get the mail or you moved and whatever the case may be, then Social Security says, oh, okay, you don't want to respond? Okay, we're going to hold back your whole check. And then that'll that'll get you to respond, and, and it always did. Um, but the problem was is now, now you've got people that can't pay rent and they have to go down to the office and they might be in the hospital. So people weren't able to pay rent and electricity and buy food. And so, it, yeah, it was... It was terrible. It was a bad idea. And so he changed it. He says, okay, what we want to do is we want people to contact us. And they obviously probably don't know, probably didn't get the letter, whatever the case may be, or there some people ignore us, Social Security. And uh, so let's bring it to their attention and we'll hold back 10%. So when people get 10% less in their check, that'll kind of wake them up and, you know, entice them to come down and call us up and stuff like that. So I, so I think that's a very... Uh, yeah, a, a very, very reasonable um, policy. So they good good job on that. Good job, Anderson Cooper and all of the uh, the, the news channels that uh, they covered um, last year, um, the problem with overpayments. See, we can do something. Um, so we can do something. So reach out to your, you know, news channels and all that kind of stuff and say, hey, this is, uh, you know, this is what needs to be done. We need better customer service in the offices. Y'all need to, you know, local politicians. We need better customer service. We need, you know, dental as part of Medicare and vision. And, you know, the, yeah, I've got a whole list of stuff that we need to start pushing for. So this is a good start, but it shows that we can do something. Um, all right. Um, okay. So number one. So if uh, I got a question yesterday, somebody asked, well, uh, you know, is it going to be 10% now? I've, I'm start, still, I'm currently paying back and stuff like, no, that's only an automatic withholding when they don't respond 10%. And then the person comes in. And then they negotiate, you know, 60 months or 12 months or whatever the case may be. So that's just a, hey, you have an overpayment type notification. <clears throat> All right. Number two, again, um, not, you know, I've adjudicated thousands and thousands and thousands of overpayments when I worked at Social Security. And the burden of proof was, I, I always took the burden of proof. It's like, okay, you worked over. Here's the proof that you worked over. Um, you know, you weren't entitled to get this money and here's the proof. So I, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure there are some situations that apply to number two here, but I don't think it's all that super relevant to us today. All right. Um, here's the big one. So here is what we're going to do. All the people out there with overpayments. So if you currently have an overpayment, calculate it out and say, okay, um, I am currently paying my overpayment. And if I currently pay it, it's going to be $100 for the next two and a half years. Okay. I'm doing gorilla math in my, in my head right now. So, but if I extend it to five years, 60 months, then that's going to, I only have to pay half per month. And again, with Social Security, they're, they don't charge interest. So you're not going to be charged interest, you know, for an extra year or two years or three years, you tack it on. So you're just going to renegotiate your loan, basically, you know, kind of think of it that way. You've got a two year payback. Is it going to make your life easier if you go five years? So if it does, then this is this is the part that's for you. And it's so much easier. Previously, up until last Friday, someone came in. And the people at the front window and everybody, they could pretty much, you know, 12 months, okay, no problem, done, no paperwork, 12 months, repayment plan, done, easy. 24 months, okay, okay, tell us, you know, what's going on, yada, yada, yada. 36 months, then internally, the employee usually had to have someone write off on it, you know, a supervisor, a technical expert. So it took some, it took some extra proofs and some extra steps. Um, that era has ended last Friday. The new era starting tomorrow is you go into the Social Security Administration and you say, okay, all right, I've got an overpayment. I agree with it. You know, again, we'll talk about requesting a waiver later, but in terms of renegotiating your plan, if 
five years, 60 months. So take it and the divide it by 60 months going forward and uh, just go in there and say, yeah, I want to renegotiate. I want to do I want to do 60 months going forward. Um, and according to this. Um, you only need to provide a verbal summary of their income, resources, and expenses. And recipients of the means-tested SSI program, that's the welfare-based program, would not need to provide even this summary. This change extended the easier repayment option by additional two years. So from three years to five years. So previously you would have to have uh, uh, provide documentation, you know, how much, you know, how much you're getting, you know, in terms of work and obviously social security and how much you were getting from social security. And then you would have to provide, you know, kind of your, your lease or your mortgage, show how much your mortgage is, how much your car is, how much you pay for food. And they say, okay, all right. So you've got, you know, a hundred, you only got a hundred dollars left over after pay everything. Okay. We'll do $10 or $50 a month or whatever like that. But if they, you know, okay, you got $10,000 left over out yet. No, we're not going to do a, you know, $10 a month. Um, and yes, I've done many of those. Um, yeah, doctors, but I need that money to pay for my new Ferrari. Yeah. Yes. Had one. Um, all right. So, yeah, so this is the important thing. So, okay. So here's, here's the strategy and please be understanding because there are going to be people throughout the country calling social security Monday and y'all are going to be one, some of them, and, but y'all are going to be well armed and know what you're talking about. So it's important that you do it immediately um, because it's what, uh, March 24th. And if you want this change to take place immediately, if not sooner, so you might be able to get it changed this month. I was looking at the policy that they rewrote and depends on when your, your last payment was withheld. If you're on the fourth Wednesday of the month, you might be able to get that one changed. Um, but ask them. It doesn't hurt. Again, this is all new policy. There's a bunch of little gray area there. So call up Social Security, go down to the local Social Security office and say, hey, I owe X amount and I want to go ahead and extend it to the uh, the 60 months, the five years. Um, and again, you don't have to you know bring any income or resources or anything like that. If you want to do beyond 60 months, then yeah, you have to jump through all the hoops. Um, but if you just want to make your life easier, if, and if it does, you know, again, calculate it out. If it does make your life easier, do the five years. Again, call Social Security and tell them that that's what you want to do. They'll just, you know, you just tell them, hey, this, that, and the other, and this is why I need five years. Um, and then ask them if they can do it with the current month. So if you already paid $100 this month, and you negotiate it down to 50 based on you know six, 60 months, then I was looking at the policy, the details on the policy, you know, the policies, again, you know, social security policies, 20,000 pages. Yes, I read through some of the, the new policy. Um, I have no life, um, but uh, <clears throat> it looks as though you might be able to do it with a current operating month as they call it, but, but don't worry about any of that. Just ask them say, okay, yeah, I want to renegotiate. I want to do the five-year deal. Um, is there any way I can do that effective this month so you can return? It, it's it's easy for them. All they have to do is put it in is their DMS, a debt management system. They just go in there and a few little keystrokes. Um, so it's not all that difficult for them. So ask them, if at all possible, can I do it this month and get my, you know, 50 bucks back? Um, and then starting next month, it'll be, you know, they're reduced. Um, and again, please, 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 please be nice. Um, the, the employees are having a hard time uh, as it is. And this extra policy and these new policies that uh, probably there's, again, tons of gray area that they're trying to deal with. And uh, so please be understanding and tell them Ed said hi. Um, all right. Uh, let's see here. Okay. And then number four, and if you got any questions, make sure you type them in the chat there. And once I finish, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go to uh, questions and answers and make sure everybody presses like. Um, all right, and finally, we will be making it much easier for overpaid beneficiaries to request a waiver of overpayment in the event they believe themselves to have been without any fault 
and or without the ability to repay. Um, I talked about this in my overpayment video. Um, in order to get a overpayment waived, two things have to be met. It's not your fault and you do not have the ability to repay. Um, so again, it's, people say, well, it's not my fault. I told Social Security that I was working and stuff, but eh, you still did work. And so Social Security kind of looks at it that way. Um, but again, there's you know thousands of different variables in terms of how an overpayment. So if you believe you've you know jumped over those two hurdles, it's not your fault, and you don't have the ability to repay, um, then you request a waiver. SSA six three two. Let me uh, type that in here. Request for waiver six thirty two. All right, so SSA 632. I love in this new system. It pops up there like that. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so, yeah, you can request a waiver, and, yeah, you, you have to do all the, you know, you fill out the paperwork, and you put your income and resources and all that kind of stuff because you have to prove that uh, you, you don't have the ability to repay it. And um, this is the key to number four, is and, and we will be making it much easier for overpaid beneficiaries to request an overpayment. I looked at all the policies and I haven't seen anything yet. So it looks like they're going to be doing something going forward to make it easier. Um, but uh, I don't see anything concrete yet that is making it easier. Um, but as I always say, one of the, the keys of Social Security is protective filing. So while the Social Security Administration is you know, going about making it easier to request a waiver, I would probably recommend calling up and getting the process started. If you believe, again, that it's not your fault and you don't have the ability to repay your overpayment, and, you know, if, if either of those don't, then you just do the, you know, the five years extend, you know. Um, but if you want to do the waiver, then I would probably, you know, protect yourself in the sense of um, getting it started and that way later on, you know, next week, three weeks from now, next month, when they start doing everything, you're already in the pipeline um, and you're protected for March. So if anything comes back, you know, they'll, they'll adjust it. But, uh, but one of the questions I got yesterday was um, if they determine that the waiver was not your fault, will they return the money? Yes. Yes. So if for some reason they determine, OK, oh, yeah, this, yeah, this, you know, we messed up uh, your wages and we thought you were working, but, uh, you know, somebody, you know, mistyped in the, the, the social security number and it was somebody else. Um, and, but, you know, you just started paying it or we already took money from your check and everything like that. Oops. Um, our mistake. Um, we're going to go ahead and waive it. And when they waive it, they can waive the entire overpayment. So even if you've been paying it, for a year, two years, three years, and you request the waiver and they say, oh, this should have never been, what, what, what happened here? What, you know, how, how did this happen? They will delete the overpayment and all the money you paid, they'll return to you. So there's that. Um, all right, so again, so here's the, uh, the end of the commissioner's uh, communication, implementing these policy changes with proper education and training across the people, policies, and systems of agencies is an important but complex shift. And we're undertaking that shift with urgency, diligence, and speed. All right. So this is, again, all the training that they're going to have to do with all the employees. And, you know, the, all the employees are going to say, hey, what about this exception? What about this exception? So it's a policy that's going to, um, yeah, it's going to take a while. So please, please, please be patient with the employees. Um, uh, but if they're rude to you, then that's a whole different thing. If they're rude, that's unacceptable. So there's that. All righty. So that is that. Um, all right. So we talked about uh, renegotiating. Um, we talked about uh, doing it quickly so you can, uh, you know, get that benefit this month if possible. Um, we talked about uh, you know getting a waiver if you completely disagree with it or if you want it waived and all the rest of it. Okay, so all right. Um, 
question. I'm not sure how to answer this one. Um, how does SSA handle settlement, settlement payments received by MVA victims? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what an MVA victim is. And the settlement pay, any, any type of, that sounds like a lawsuit type thing, uh, class action, probably, maybe that's MVA. Um, but uh, yeah, any type of settlement payments, it, it, that's not earned income. So does yeah, nothing like that affects. Again, as always, unless you're receiving SSI. SSI is the means tested the welfare based program. So anytime you get any money, then you know if you get hundred thousand dollar settlement, doesn't matter where it came from, um, and you're receiving welfare, then yeah, you're, you're probably not going to be receiving welfare anymore. But in terms of SSDI, the disability insurance, retirement, survivor benefits, spousal benefits, uh, doesn't matter. So there's that. Uh, all right, let's see here. I still don't understand how people were overpaid. Was it a failure to report earnings while on Social Security or was it just all errors by Social Security? A vast majority of time, it was the first one. It's uh, um, basically, uh, you know, somebody retires early and they say, I'm going to stop working. I'm going to stay under the monthly limit. And then they don't. Um, or, you know, they're 63, 64, and they've been on for Social Security for a few years, and they get overpaid, you know. And and a lot of times, you know, people say, well, um, I'm only, you know, the the, the limit is, you know, this year is twenty two thousand three hundred twenty. I'm only going to be over a thousand dollars more if I call up Social Security and stop my check. You know, it might mess everything up. I might not, they might stop that check, but they not might not be able to restart it, and I can vouch for that. So they say, hey, I'm, you know, it's because I'm going to go $1,000 over, um, you know, I'm only going to withhold $500, so I'll just let it ride. And then when Social Security sends me the nasty gram, you know, after I file my taxes next year, I'll just go ahead and pay the $500, right? Or people on disability work and, you know, don't tell Social Security and don't stop the payments. And yeah, most of the time it's work related. SSI, SSDI, early retirement. So I would say 80% of the time it's uh, it's because of work. And that's another thing that Social Security, uh, the, the Commissioner of Social Security is requesting authorization to um, get with the payroll providers like ADP and all those big payroll providers to interface with them to reduce overpayment. So that I think that would be very good. So, to, you know, again, if you're receiving retirement, early retirement or disability or SSI, um, and you know you want those benefits, then they're gonna say, okay, well, you know, you have to give us permission to interact with your payroll provider. Um, and that way we immediately get notified you are working. So avoid the overpayments. So I think that'll be good. Um, but there's always a delay and depends on the computer system. You know, you, you work last month and you know, you don't get paid till the following month. And so, yeah, that's, it's, yeah, people get paid all the time. Oh, let's see here. Is the tax on benefits abolished yet? Nope. Nope. Up to 85% of Social Security uh, benefits can be taxed. And that goes back to the 1980s. Um, but Again, with everything else, you know, if, if you want, um, yeah, I think uh, me personally, you know, people making under a hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year or something, you know, shouldn't get taxed on social security. 50% of people don't get taxed on social security. You know, if you're, if you're just getting social security alone, there's probably, you're probably not getting taxed, but if you have other income coming in, then again, but I'm not a tax professional. I've been trying to cancel my subscription with the IRS for decades. All right, let's see here. Um, Dr. Norman again, will SSA reimburse me for the six months the premium was deducted for my very meager check once my Medicaid is active again? Okay, so this sounds like uh, Dr. Norman there um, was, okay, so you're receiving Medicare and you're paying for the Medicare premium, the 174 and change. Um, and you applied for Medicaid 
and also the Medicare Savings Program, and that's a federal state program that helps you pay for your, you know, uh, Medicare premium and also other things. So it really depends on when your state approves you. So if your state goes back six months and says and tells Medicare that, okay, we will pay Dr. Norman's Medicare Part B starting this month, then no. If they say, okay, we're going to pay your Medicare Part B going back six months, and then Social Security, you know, gets paid that, and they, you know, computer talks to whatever, you know, Medicare, Social Security system. Um, and then what happens is if Social Security sees two payments for the same month, one from Medicaid and one from you, then yeah, they'll return it. Yes. But it will take forever. So, or not forever. It won't be as quickly as you would like. Let's put it that way. Maybe I should run for office, All right? <laughs> uh, yes, Denise, yes, thank you very much. Look at that. So Denise says, uh, press, uh, please hit the like button to show why we appreciate the videos. Can encourage him to do more insightful live streams. Yes, please, thank you. Or you can uh, click on the, uh, the little coffee thing down there and buy me a beer or whatever. Oh, okay. Um, okay. MVA was a motor, ve motor vehicle accident. Yeah. So that's uh, uh, no relevance uh, to anything other than uh, um, SSI. If you're receiving the, uh, the welfare-based program and any type of money is coming in, um, yeah, well, might make you ineligible. But everything else, yeah. But if you're, Mike, if you're a motor vehicle accident and you became disabled because of it, I hope, you, and, and you're not currently working, I hope you filed for disability. Um, and if you're, if you haven't, and you're looking to file for disability, I am in the midst of doing. I've I just uploaded three um, disability videos on how to do it and tri tips and tricks. And I'm going to be editing another video today, so I'll put the fourth one up probably today or tomorrow. So probably tomorrow or the next day. All right. Uh, let's see here. What other kind of question? Have you ever seen Social Security waive an overpayment of SSI benefits due to an attorney malpractice in drafting a special needs trust correctly? Wow, that is a very specific question. See what I talk about? Exceptions, exceptions, exceptions. There's always, um, yeah, we're talking about, you know, 70 million people on Social Security. So there's 70 million particular cases. That's why the Social Security policy is 20,000 pages. Um, but you all don't have to worry about it. You got me. Um, have I ever seen personally um, an overpayment benefits, S, overpayment of SSI due to an attorney malpractice and drafting the special needs trust incorrectly? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, because if you can prove a jump over those two hurdles, again, that's as, as of right now, they're drafting the new policy, but I, I think going forward, if it was not your fault, so if this not your fault, you can say it's lawyer's fault and you can't repay it, then yes, yeah, I've seen not this specific thing, but I've seen, you know, a bunch of stuff similar to this that were overweight, that were uh, waived. Um, again, not your fault and you can't repay it. So, yeah, but, you know, even if it was, wasn't your fault, you know, if you've, you know, getting, you know, if you're making $100,000 a month, then kind of Social Security kind of want their money back. Sure, it was our fault. We messed up. We lost your wages. You sent your wages in. We lost them. Oops. But you just hit the lottery and you're worth, you know, $20 million. The taxpayer would, taxpayers are kind of like part of that money. You know, that, that, yeah, that the $3,000 we paid you, sure, it wasn't your fault. We messed up. We lost your wages. But you've got a million dollars in the bank. Come on, man. Give us, pay, pay the taxpayer back the money. You know, so because uh, that's, you know, part of the Social Security part. It's it's not personal. It's, you know, um, I, I did a video that people, uh, I've, you know, there, there's so much clickbait out there. You know, you see all this. Oh, you get two hundred dollars more next month. And you watch the video and it's some guy saying, oh, yeah, this one guy, you know, eight years ago had this idea of giving everybody two hundred dollars. And <laughs> I tricked you into clicking. Um, I kind of did one of those. Uh, it, it wasn't that terrible. It was uh, Social Security employees don't care about you. Uh, watch that video. Um, but it, I'll give you the, the, the overview. It's um, people always say, oh, the, 
the reason this person, you know, you know, denied my this, that, or the other is because they didn't like me. No, social security employees don't care about you in that sense. They, social security employees are very compassionate. I, I know thousands of them, very compassionate. There's 1% in every place that it's not, but anyway. Um, but they just don't want to make a mistake <laughs> because if they make, make a mistake and deny something they shouldn't be denied, they have to fix it. And it takes, in social security, it takes 10 times longer to fix anything. And these people are already knee deep. They're, they're underwater. And so they're like, I just don't want to make a mistake because then I'll have to correct this thing next month or three months from now when, you know, invariably, you know, someone will find out, the person will come back in and I'll have to correct it. And, and I just don't have the time. So they don't care about you. They just want to do the right thing. Believe me, believe me, 99.9% .9 of social security employees, they just want to do the right thing and get it right the first time. Um, so, you know, they don't, oh, I'm going to deny this person because I don't like the shirt they're wearing. I don't like their haircut or their lack of hair or whatever the case may be. No, no, they don't. They just don't want to make mistakes so they don't have to, so they can, they can have a, you know, a, a breather every now and then. All right. So, um, what are the other ways that overpayment occur, deserves, occur besides working? Oh, all kinds of ways. I, I think I told the story of, uh, I had this uh, um, uh, wife and two children come in and file for uh, uh, survivor benefits because uh, the uh, the father died. Um, and then it turns out about 10 years later, the father popped up on the radar and he faked his death. And uh, and we couldn't prove that, you know, they were in cahoots or anything like that. They never knew that he was still alive. He had went overseas and faked his death. And so, yeah, so we couldn't very well charge the children for an overpayment and say, okay, well, it turns out your dad still alive. So give us back the, you know, the hundred thousand dollars we paid for to you for the last 10 years. So yeah, million cases like that. Uh, let's see here. I'm a 74 year old. I'm not even reading these before I pop them up there. Maybe I should read them sometimes. So I don't something anyway, but uh, what are you going to do? Um, I shouldn't have said that. Now people are going to start putting stupid stuff up there. <laughs> All the trolls. Um, I'm a 74 year old widow. And in 2022, I bought and then sold a, a lot making a profit. So a, a lot, like a, a lot as in, uh, uh, land. SSA has informed me that this year, 20 odd that I have to pay them $6,000. They are taking the money out of my future payments. Um, so okay so you sold a lot you're so this is not retirement or ssdi um or survivors or anything like that because you're 74 years old and you can sell and do whatever you want doesn't matter so i'm not exactly sure what selling a lot again i think a lot, a lot is land a lot of or a lot of widgets i'm not sure so yeah, um, but, but however, but but if Social Security says you have an overpayment, I mean, if if you there is, um, oh yeah, that, yeah, that might be a a lot. Yeah, a lot is a piece of land, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Or a lot of she sells on eBay and she sold a lot. Yeah, but anyway, um, taxes. Yeah, that's, so that's taxes. So that has nothing to do with Social Security. So yeah. Yeah, um, if we're on SSI, then, you know, but yeah, so she said SSA. So, all right. All right. So that's tax type stuff. And I don't get into taxes. So you don't owe Social Security, you owe the IRS and probably the IRS is garnishing your Social Security. That might be the case. But your cases, your issue is not with Social Security Administration. The Social Security Administration is just essentially following kind of a court order that says you owe taxes. Um, so you're, you need to, uh, yeah, you need to address it with, uh, um, yeah, with the IRS. So, and, and that's, uh, um, one of the things I forgot to mention, and I, I know this doesn't apply to any of y'all, but, uh, in terms of one of the things on policy is, um, uh, I'm just, I just thought of this for some reason it has nothing to do with you, uh, um. But uh, um, anybody out there that is watching in the future, if it's a fraud type thing, you can't renegotiate. 
Um, so, and, and um, whenever I say the word fraud, people say, well, was, was my case fraud? I worked when I supposed to want. No, if, if, if you're questioning whether your overpayment was caused by fraud, it's, it wasn't fraud. The people that know, uh, they've already gone through OIG, the Office of the Inspector General, and they've been convicted. And yeah, the people that have committed fraud and got money from Social Security by fraud, they know. If you're questioning whether yours, your particular case is fraud, then it's not. I guarantee it. Those people that committed fraud. For example, I had this one um, fraud. Um, he got a fake birth certificate. He was born overseas and uh, he got a fake birth certificate that said he was his full retirement age. At that time, it was 66. So he was actually like 60 years old and he got a fake birth certificate from his country that said he was 66. And so he filed for retirement and he got retirement and he got his full full benefit amount. And, uh, you know, he, did, he, he could still continue to work and everything. And then Social Security eventually found out. And uh, yeah, that was fraud. So, all right, let's see here. And remember, um, if you need help with Medicare plans, life burial insurance, estate planning, I put together a bunch of partners that can help out with all that kind of stuff. And uh, so if you want more information, make sure you call the number there. And uh, this is uh, me and my son. We're doing this and uh, we put together again social security doesn't cover <laughs> as much as it needs to in terms of social security survivor benefits you need a lot of different stuff so um and i know through decades of experience what is good and what is bad so i put together a team of all these people um partners so call that number and no cost for just information to see if it's right for you um, and they support our channel so we appreciate it and then obviously click subscribe you like those little ticker things i love my new thing i love technology all right let's see what other chats we got here um yeah um so yeah that doesn't make sense at all yeah something is very very wrong so she is saying this isn't for taxes this is from social security saying i made too much money yet i will pass my full retirement age yeah, um, unless you're receiving, again, if you're receiving not Social Security, but you're receiving SSI, yeah, if you're receiving SSI, the Supplemental Security Income, then, yeah, then you, that's probably it. You're, you're not receiving Social Security retirement or disability. You're receiving SSI. That is the only way you can get overpaid, um, yeah, past your full retirement age. So if, if that's the case, then yes. All right, let's see here. Um, I don't understand why SSA is so disconnected with reality of an SSI D, uh, Social Security Disability Insurance recipient attempting to go back to work. Um, the trial work period and extended period of eligibility rules suck. Yeah, they are um, how about their side. I, I think you know it, the the intent of them is pretty good you know you're if you're receiving social security disability and you want to try to go back to work then you have this trial work period it's a pretty good name um so basically nine months you can make a million bucks a month and try to go back to work and if you're able to then you know you call up and say hey i'm making you know ten thousand dollars a month stop my benefits um but if you decide after nine months that you just can't do it, then no harm, no foul. Um, and then once you get out of your trial work period, you can continue to receive benefits during this 36 month extended period of eligibility. And I do 100% agree that it sucks in the sense of it's very complicated. And most of the time when you call social security employees, you know, they, uh, they, it takes so long to explain. That's why they um, offer the uh, this service that uh, Social Security is contracted with called Ticket to Work. So they are supposed to be experts in helping you, um, you know, get to work and make sure you stay under the trial work period and the APE and all the rest of it. Um, and then each area of Social Security has what's called an AWIC. 
area work incentives coordinator. So not every office, not 1200 of these, they're in each area. Um, so they are supposed to be experts in, uh, um, yeah, helping you try to see if you can go back to work on disability. Yeah, um, I, I think the intent of the trial work period and everything is good. The putting in actual practice and telling people about it and then explaining it. And yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's yeah, it's difficult. Um, get rid of the earnings test cap and we'll be fine. Yeah, well, it's, uh, um, yeah, that goes all the way back to 1935 on FDR that, uh, you know, Social Security was supposed to replace um, your earnings, a, par a portion of your earnings. I talked about that yesterday when I talked about the uh, windfall elimination provision about, you know, 45% and replacement rate and everything. Um, but yeah, Social Security is supposed to, you know, when you stop working, it's supposed to replace a portion of your earnings. Um, but FDR said, well, but if you're not stopped working, then, you know, then it's not going to be replacing anything because you're still working. But when you, so that's, that's why there's an earnings uh, cap, you know, going all the way back to 1935. Uh, da, da, da. All right, let's see here. All right, when signing up for SS for uh, Social Security, I was only able to list my first marriage, but I remarried before 60. Will this cause an issue? Um, your, if your other marriage was less than 10 years and it didn't end in death, then it doesn't matter. Um, before, um, yeah, we used to have to, when we took a claim at social security, we used to have to put pretty much all the earning, all the, all the marriages down there, but then it, they kind of changed it and says, um, do you have any marriages over 10 years? And if you say, no, I was married, you know, five times and they were all lasted five years, then it doesn't matter. Don't, don't need it. But any marriage over 10 years has to be recorded. Um, and that way there's a record in case that person or you or in the future, you know, need to refer to that. So um, you were only able to list your first marriage. Is that possibly through uh, um, the Internet or something? So. Uh, da, 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 let's see. All right, let's see. Social Security tells you to guard against phone scans, but then calls from regional field office. Spent hours on the phone on hold to verify it was a legit call. Yeah, if uh, yeah, the Social Security uh, will. Yeah, I I can attest to this. Social Security will never call you out of the blue um, unless you've got something pending. So if you send in an internet claim. Um, they'll call you up and confirm if your case is pending and you, they're waiting for the proofs, you know, birth certificate or marriage certificate, they'll call you up and say, hey, what's going on? If you have a, you're on disability and it's time for your CDR, then they'll call you up. So yeah, but it, but it's easy. Yeah, be, yeah, be careful. Uh, um, if somebody calls you up and says, you know, they used to call me up when I worked at Social Security and you know, I'd be in the Social Security office and they'd call me on my cell phone and say, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to cancel your social security number. I'm like, oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> I like to mess with them a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, if you get something suspicious, then uh, absolutely um, say, oh, okay, get all their information. And if they give you a badge number, that's the first clue. Social security employees don't have badge numbers. Um, and then, uh, you know, ask them, okay, what's your DO? And if they don't know what a DO code is, then that's probably wrong. You know, everybody knows, but a DO code is the district office code. And you can ask them, you know, what's uh, what type of employee are you if they've, you know, Social Security field offices have claim specialists, uh, customer service representatives, technical expert, operations supervisors, so assistant district manager, district manager. So if they're if they don't have any one of those titles, if they just say I'm a, you know, I'm a agent for the Social Security, then probably not. So, the OIG Office of Inspector General has special agents, but uh, yeah, I would just call the 800 number. Super long story short, call the 800 rumor and says, hey, I just got a call about this, that, and the other. And they can immediately look at, oh yeah, they're calling you because you know they have questions about your whatever, whatever. Um, oh, someone actually, oh, ah. Uh, uh, let's see, uh, GN, so this is a Palms reference. <laughs> 
Um, against equity and good conscience, SSDI recipient can get an injury setback, gets SSDI, then gets seasonal temporary e e experimental employment fail. So yes, so this is the uh, um, what I talked about um, in terms of it's it's you know those two things. It's not your fault, and you don't have the ability to repay it. Um, those kind of go hand in hand with okay, if you know if 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 it's uh, against equity and good conscience to collect this type of benefits. Like the, the example I gave um, with the, uh, the children had been receiving 10 you know, benefits for you know, surviving child benefits for 10 years. Um, I mean, is, I, I think it's not good conscience to collect, you know, put a debt on those kids for the rest of their life because you know, they had nothing to do with um, their father faking his death, right? So again, Millions of examples like this. Please, everybody click uh, um, like, please, and subscribe. And I know everybody subscribed. So um, let's see. Um, as a naturalized citizen, is it better to apply online or go into the office? Doesn't really matter. E either way is fine. Yep. Either way is fine. Um, all right. Let's see here. Um, if you're if you're doing a disability claim, I would probably recommend online because it allows you more time to put all your information down there correctly and everything. Um, watch my videos on uh, on disability, and I go over all that. All right, um, I had a pending application, but I was afraid to call the number back until I verify legitimacy through the main number. Oh, okay, so that's a, yeah, so yeah. So as I mentioned, if you've got a pending application, yeah, they'll probably call you, so. But it's, a, yeah, it should use, if you've got caller ID, it should say US government. Uh, but it's funny, uh, one of the, um, for, for, for a few months, we couldn't figure it out. Um, whenever we called someone, um, instead of saying US government on the caller ID, it said Walmart. You know, so people think we were calling for Walmart. So finally, we got the phone lines figured out. And so, yeah, so, but people can spoof that as well. So they, you know, spoof phone numbers. So, but you can, you know, when they call up and just ask them a bunch of questions and they should know, um, you know, your benefit amount and all that kind of stuff. And so, um, all right. Oh, more uh, equity. How does SS? Uh, so again, these are the Palmer, the, what he is reading here, he or she, Prime, um, GN02250. This is POMS, the uh, uh, policy manual that I always say is you know, 20,000 pages. This is where this is coming from. So um, yeah. How does Social Security Disability Insurance prove employment opportunities are not commensurate to overpayment from temporal Caesar work that fails? Oh, gosh. That is, okay, um, let me parse this a little bit. Prove that employment, well, are not commensurate to overpayment from temporal C's work that failed. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's pages and pages of particular situation, what your disability is, what the local economy, how much it, the benefits were. If you want to make the argument, that's the giant gray area that uh, I, I'm almost sure Nobody in the local office will be able to uh, make the final decision on that. If you think your overpayment was caused by this, um, this is your particular situation, then you request a waiver and the local office will probably have to contact the regional expert or the national expert to get a decision on this. And then if you disagree with it again, then you request a personal conference. So from a waiver, you request a waiver on the 632. And if you and if they deny you, then you request a personal conference with uh, an, an employee in that particular office. And technically a, a day before they're supposed to provide you with the, the, the file so you can review it. And then you have your personal conference, you make your case. Um, and if it goes your way, beautiful. If it doesn't, then the next step is the administrative law judge. And unfortunately, that takes forever to see the administrative law judge. Um, but the administrative law judges have a lot more latitude 
Um, Social Security employees are kind of bound by policy. Um, the administrative law judges are too, but they can kind of read between the lines a lot easier. Um, so I've seen a lot of things that administrative law judges have overridden and uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I, on this, you know, I, I have to, you know, spend a few days looking at all your details um, and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, that sounds like a, it's a, a giant gray area there. So I would go for it. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Yeah. With, uh, um, yeah, with number spoofing, they can put the ID in. Yeah. But again, you know, you as we used to say in social security, the preponderance of the evidence, you know, it says the U S government. Okay. I don't trust that alone. One piece of evidence. Um, but I do have a pending case, Social Security, and the local, uh, the phone number is not, you know, some arbitrary number, the local number, the, the number they call me in is the local number for the local office. I do have a pending case. Uh, yeah, I did forget to return my proofs. And he said, you know, he wanted me to get it to him in five days and now it's seven days. And so, yeah, he, that's probably him. All right. The, the person I talked to. So preponderance of an evidence. All right. Uh, let's see here. Personal conference. Okay. So you're doing the personal conference is what I'm doing. And I can't do it without an attorney's expertise. Otherwise, uh, SSA retaliate. No, I, I don't retaliate. Yeah. 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 The, even the personal conference, it's somebody in, it's a claim specialist in your local office. Um, in that particular case, if it's that much gray area there, you really need to see the administrative law judge. I, I doubt very seriously. Um, yeah, I mean, they might be, you know, say, okay, yeah, it, this is a, a giant gray area. So $10 a month, <laughs> you can pay back and, you know, we'll get our money back in, you know, 147 years or whatever the case may be. Um, and then set up the very, very minimum. Um, and then say, okay, I want to speak to the administrative law judge. And the administrative law judge um, agrees with you deletes the overpayment then the ten dollars a month you paid for the previous 12 months they'll pay it back so that's my suggestion all right so that looks like all of the questions so that is the plan of attack in terms of overpayments uh it's going to be a nightmare getting into the Social Security Administration, walking in, calling, all the rest of it. Um, but uh, if, if you want to renegotiate your overpayment and extend it up a couple of years, then uh, I think it's worth it. So, All right. Um, oh, last one. Let's uh, throw this one. First time applicants probably won't know to expect a call from the regional number. Yeah, the regional number, um, they um, sometimes field offices, like, you know, my field office was the third busiest in the country and, you know, staffing would go up and down. And sometimes the regional office, there's nine regional offices throughout the country. Sometimes they will help take some of the load. So it's particularly when you file for an internet claim, it goes to the local office, but if the local office has too many, you know, just inundated, then they will, you know, workload mobility. They will send it to the regional office, uh, the payment center, the processing center in the regional office, and they will uh, help us out, help the particular offices out. So that's, yeah. Uh, oh, okay, we got a, a couple more questions here. So we'll, we'll do a couple more questions and then we'll call it a day, night. All right, so my husband received a workers' comp lump sum from claim while he was getting SSDI. Is it only for earned income? How far can you go back? This was years ago. Okay, so workers' comp, it really depends if it was a, you know, a private workers' comp or if it was a public, you know, state workers' comp type thing. Um, Congress decided that people that receive disability, that start receiving disability, should not make more when they're on disability than when they actually earned while they were working. So that's why um, if you get Social Security and you get $2,000 from Social Security and then you get workers comp and you get $2,000 from workers comp, that's $4,000. And when you were actually working, you're only making $3,000. Congress said, eh, not so much. Um, so what they do is they kind of offset that. 
And so they reduce your social security benefit to, you know, kind of lesser than what you were making um, while you were actually working. And what happens is sometimes the workers comp, they don't do it on a, you know, okay, we'll give you $2,000 a month for, you know, the next forever. And that's easy to calculate. Quite often what they do is they give you a lump sum. So they say, okay, we anticipate, you know, based on your actuarial table, you're going to live until, you know, 85 years old. So we're going to give you $2,000 a month times, you know, however many years. Um, and then we'll give you a lump sum. And then what Social Security does is they take the same actuarial table and says, okay, you got $100,000. We are going to calculate that as, you know, $2,000 a month or $1,000 a month. And so that's why even though you got it, it was a lump sum, it's still going to count against your Social Security forever, never, never, never. So there's that. Um, da, 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 let's see here. Turning 65 in November, can I go to Social Security office and sign up for Part A and Part B, working until 66 in 10 months? Yeah, you certainly can. Um, but uh, um, if you're working have, and have health insurance from work um, and you're happy with it and your employer has 20 or more employees and all that kind of good stuff, then you don't have to sign up for, you know, you can sign up for Medicare A if you don't have an HSA. Watch my videos on, uh, you know, uh, Medicare. Um, and uh, so you don't have to. Um, but if you want to, yeah. Um, if you're not, if, if you're currently receiving Social Security benefits, you'll automatically be signed up for Medicare Part A and Part B once you turn 65. About 100 days before you turn 65, you'll get the cards in the mail. But if you want to go ahead and sign up, yeah, you, you can go online and sign up for Part A, Part B at 65. You can go into the office, uh, call, schedule an appointment, um, phone appointment, whatever. Um, but then obviously, you, you know, Part A and Part B is awesome, but there's so many different gaps. There's six gaps in, um, you know, original Medicare. The biggest one, the biggest one is uh, the Part B. Um, you know, if you have a $100,000 surgery, you're on the hook for 20% of that. And that's unlimited, never ends. Um, so that's why a lot of people get either a Medicare supplement, which is the one I was plan G or plan N or a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, but uh, yeah, you can call um, my, where is it? Uh, so yeah, call my Medicare partners um, at 888-817-0446 and they can see what's available in your area. Um, so you call that number again with all these and you know, helps out the channel, it supports us, um, kind of referral partner. And uh, um, just leave a message and my son goes through all that, my son's helping me out and uh, he goes through all the messages and see what you're looking for and he puts you in touch with someone that can help you out with Medicare plans or life or burial insurance or estate planning or retirement planning or um, all that stuff. And uh, no obligation, no cost um, to learn more. All right, let's see here. What else we got? Um, when does Medicare start for a widow SSDI? Is the date they say you become disabled or is the date you receive the first payment? Yeah, it's the, uh, uh, because you got a five month waiting period. So it depends when they determine your, um, your established onset, onset date is. So whatever your EOD is, your established onset date is when you became disabled, whether you got paid for that first five months, completely irrelevant, but your established onset date 24 months from that. So you have to wait 24 months and then the 25th month you start your, uh, your Medicare, unless you turn 65 earlier. And that's definitely one thing that, uh, yeah, um, talk about all the things that need to be changed in social security, um, is the 24 month waiting period for Medicare if you're on disability, like, come on, you know, people on disability, they kind of need health care. So why do they have to wait 24 months? Um, you know, so luckily there is the, you know, the, the Obamacare marketplace, ACA. Um, um, so for that 24 months, you can get like a short-term medical, which is difficult because you're on disability. But uh, 
um, an ACA Obamacare um, because they don't have the pre-existing conditions doesn't matter. And if you're, you know, it depends on your income, you can get the subsidies and uh, help with your premium um, and all that kind of good stuff. So you can call uh, the same number and uh, we can put you in touch with someone in your area that, uh, that helps out. M. Steele, I'm a veteran. All right, thank you for your service. Air Force, Army. People in the Marine Corps, always, they never say they're a veteran. They always say I was in the Marine Corps, present company included. But people in the Air Force and Army, they say, I'm a veteran. Don't you think that's right? Anyway. Um, uh, all right, this is, this is the last one. If my ex dies, will my benefits increase? How will they know I didn't know his social security number? All right, if you are receiving benefits on that person's record as a ex-spouse or a spouse or ex-spouse, divorce spouse, whatever the case may be, and that person passes away, yeah, you could, uh, it, it automatically switches from a, a life case to a, a, a death case, deceased case, as a survivor, from spouse to a survivor. Um, yeah, um, if you're not, and you want to find out if there are benefits available, you don't need to know their social security number. That's fine. Um, so if you're looking to see if there's any money available on that person's record, just call social security, give, uh, give them that person's name, um, the date of birth, as well as you know it, um, the city and state where they were born, as well as you know it. If you happen to know their parents, you know, names, that'd be great too. Um, and I've done this a million times, you know, I've found people's social security numbers with very little information. So army. Okay. Army. All right. All right. All right. Thank you for your service. All right. I think that'll do it for today. We're, uh, went over an hour, so make sure you share. I'm really, really, really need help here and all that. Um, share like put your put the, my channel on facebook uh when you go to uh your place of worship on sunday saturday friday please share with everybody if you're in the line at social security you know at uh, you know trying to get your overpayment need renegotiated talk to the person behind you and in front of you and say hey did you hear about ed's channel um call your local news uh you know i'd love to do an interview on local news about the you know we need to get the information out there a lot of people really really need the help so this is what I'm going to do for the next uh, 10 years or as long as I'm uh, above ground. All right. Y'all take care. Have a beautiful day. And we'll see you next. Oh, somebody asked me about my next live. Um, yeah, I'm kind of doing lives. Like, I think I've done a live like every day this week. Um, at the very least, it's Thursday. But I'll probably do another live in the next couple of days. All righty. All right. Y'all take care.